Here are today's top stories. Lieutenant General Carnito Galvez Jr. takes over the leadership of the AFP. Labor groups challenge President Duterte to sign the draft executive order removing contractualization. The LTFRB approves the entry of a new ride-sharing company. And PBA Legends announce a fundraising event for the benefit of fellow retired players. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Lieutenant General Carlito Galvez Jr. is the new AFP Chief of Staff replacing General Rey Leonardo Guerrero. President Duterte led the turnover ceremony at Camp Aguinaldo. The outgoing General Guerrero was honored with a testimonial parade and conferred the award of the Philippine Legion of Honor. General Galvez vowed to end terrorism and express support for the peace process in Mindanao. He stressed that violent extremism remains a threat as demonstrated by the Marawi City crisis. Galvez is the former commander of the Western Mindanao Command in Zamboanga City and a member of the PMA Class 1985. He was one of the key military officers who led the government troops during the operations to liberate Marawi City from the ISIS Malti Group in 2017. President Rodrigo Duterte takes full legal responsibility for the arrest of Australian nun Patricia Fox on grounds of disorderly conduct. Duterte stressed that the Bureau of Immigration was acting upon his orders. Duterte said that the 71-year-old Catholic nun should be investigated on the basis of disorderly conduct but not to be deported or arrested. The chief executive said he can take all the criticisms and the attacks from all the citizens of the country but not from a foreigner. Fox was ordered arrested and temporarily detained on April 16 after evidence showed the Australian nun wrongfully engaged in a political activity in Davao City on April 7 this year. Duterte also called on the communists not to invite their foreign counterparts who violate the Philippine laws. The president made this appeal after Party of European Socialists Deputy Secretary General Giacomo Filibeck was detained for deport and deported rather on April 15 for joining partisan political activities. Philip Beck reportedly flew to the country to attend a convention organized by Socialist Party Akbayan. The Philippine Embassy in Kuwait plans to increase teams to rescue distressed Filipinos in the Gulf state. The embassy, supported by an augmentation team from the DFA Office of Migrant Workers Affairs, brings the total rescue teams in Kuwait to seven. These groups have been working overtime to take custody of as many as 200 distressed Filipinos who have filed rescue requests at the embassy. Raul Dado, executive director of the DFA OWA, said the embassy has rescued the number of Filipinos who requested assistance from 200 to at least 136 as of April 7. The teams have been rescuing an average six to seven distressed Filipino household service workers all over Kuwait each day. After the Kuwaiti amnesty program ends on April 22nd, the repatriation unit of the embassy will join the rescue teams. DFA Office of Public Diplomacy Assistant Secretary El Mercato said the agency hopes to address the backlog within April 2018. Senator Sherwin Gachalian said he is not convinced that former President Benigno Aquino III is criminally liable in as far as the Dengvaksha issue is concerned. Senator Richard Gordon, chairman of the Blue Ribbon Committee, earlier said Aquino should be charged over the controversial vaccination program. Gachalian, who signed Gordon's draft committee report, explained that the former president relied on the advice of former health secretary Janet Gavin regarding the administration of the Dengvaksha vaccine. He said 
he did not see any report that the former president intentionally administered it or had any hidden motives or bad faith. Gachalian said that while Aquino may not be criminally liable, the former president should still be held accountable for the Dimbaksha mess. The senator expects a lot of debate when the Blue Ribbon Committee report reaches the plenary with much of the debates focused on the alleged liability of Aquino. Labor groups are challenging President Duterte to sign the executive order that will put a stop to contractualization. The Nagaisa Labor Coalition is doubtful for President Spokesperson Harry Roque's statement that the EO would be signed on May 1st, Labor Day. Partido ng Mangagawa Chairman Rene Magtubo said the past five drafts of the EO have been continuously rejected by employers and the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI. The most recent draft allows the direct hiring of employees as well as exemptions in contractual hiring. The groups urge Duterte to show political will and sign the executive order into law. The Philippine Embassy in Damascus advised members of the Filipino community to remain indoors and avoid unnecessary travel after fears of an impending offensive against extremists who seized the Yarmouk refugee camp in the southern part of Damascus in 2015 is expected should talks on rebel evacuation agreements fail. At least 1,000 Filipinos are still in Syria despite frequent shellings and airstrikes in various parts of the country. Yarmouk is located just 12 kilometers from the location of the Philippine Embassy. Still to come, the LTFRB approves the entry of a new ride-sharing company. Davao City and Marawi are working to become sister cities. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Baraka environmental violation. Tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade. President has his pocket. Buraka will be closed to tourists by April 26. The Interagency Task Force is finalizing comprehensive action plan to properly administer the closure. On the part of the ENR, our task to clean up and make Buraka a livable community and an enhanced tourism destination will be continuing even beyond the six-month closure period. We'll make sure that Boracay's waters will consistently pass international water quality standards. We will fast track the improvement and completion of the drainage and sewerage systems. Residual and bio-waste will be disposed of through eco-friendly technologies, while stakeholders will be retrained and solid waste management. The wetlands will be rehabilitated. Illegal structures, piled up debris, sediments and invasive alien species will be removed from this life-giving area. The forest will be recovered and properly taken care of. We will establish the Boracay Island habitat in Baragay, Yapak, to serve as nesting ground for turtles, and we will ensure that the coca pits will really have coca shares. We will continue to go after violators, and we will make sure that establishments will take corrective measures in accordance with standards. We are aware of the need to balance the environmental and socio-economic requirements as we undertake the closure. That is why we are proposing the expansion of the task force 
to include all agencies which will take care of the other concerns. This will include the DOLE, the SWB, the TESA, the Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, and even the Department of Health. Indeed, much needs to be done after many years of unbridled expansion and influx of mass tourism, we need to restudy the master plan, not only for Boracay, but the entire province of Baklan as a prime tourism destination, so that the jewel that the island has been known to be remain as jewel with proper and responsible care. We enjoin all concerned to assist in this endeavor. Let us work together to make Burakai a livable community, a better, cleaner, and safer destination we can all be proud of. The National Youth Commission on Thursday urged the youth to go out and beat the April 20 deadline for the filing of certificates of candidacy for the May 14 Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan polls. NYC officer in charge Ronald Gan Cardema made the appeal as only 79,000 have so far filed their COCs for some 350,000 SK positions in more than 42,000 barangays nationwide. A new transport network player is entering the ride-sharing company as a potential competitor to Grab Philippines. Here is our report. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has approved the application of Hype Transport Systems Incorporated. Hype is now licensed to operate as a transport network company that would compete with ride-sharing firm Grab Philippines which had earlier acquired the operations of Uber. LTFRB board member Eileen Lizada said an accredited transport network company may let its TNBS drivers apply for their own accreditation. This is needed once they apply in turn for their certificate of public conveyance. Three other potential transport network companies have pending applications with the LTFRB. For the PNA Newsroom, Janice Cave. Grab Philippines maintains that its additional charge of 2 pesos per travel time is legal. Grab Country Head Brian Ku says that under the directive of the Department of Transportation, they have the right to implement the so-called normalized fare increase. The increase, which does not need approval from the LTFRB, helps partner drivers earn during abnormal situations such as heavy traffic. 80% of the travel time charges go to the tra drivers, while 20% are spent on promos for passengers. Grab nevertheless said they are willing to follow the LTFRB's order if they were proven to have abused the travel time charge. The National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, has earmarked 11.8 billion pesos for infrastructure projects in Pangasinan this year under the Regional Development Investment Program. NEDA Ilocos Director Nelson Rilon said the flood control projects include the Lower Agno River Irrigation System Improvement Project and the Allied Rivers Improvement Project. Other projects to be funded are the Lingayan Airport and the Rosales Airport, as well as five road constructions in Districts 2, 4, 5, and 6. The projects would be implemented by the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, National Irrigation Authority, and the Department of Public Works and Highways. The Department of Labor and Employment is allotting some 111 million pesos for this year's special program for the employment of students or SPES in Central Luzon.
The amount represents the 40% government share for the salary of the student beneficiaries. 60% will come from participating private companies, national agencies, and local government units. Dole Regional Director Maria Zenaida Angara Campita said, some 445 employers in the region would participate in this year's program. She said SPES will provide meaningful opportunities for poor but deserving students in pursuing their education and at the same time experiencing the real world. Technical Support and Services Division for Employment and Welfare Head Alejandro Inza Cruz, meanwhile, said participating students would be working for around 20 to 28 working days. Cruz added the beneficiaries will be receiving salaries based on the prevailing minimum and applicable wage rates in the region. Davao City and Marawi are set to sign a Memorandum of Agreement for Sisterhood this coming May. Davao City Investment Promotion Center Officer in Charge Lemuel Ortonio said they started processing the papers for the agreement last January. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio proposed sisterhood to Marawi when she visited the city last November. Mayor Majul Usman Gandama, Gandamra later signed a letter of intent for the sister city agreement following Mayor Sara's proposal. The agreement paves the way for partnership exchange and development, which will benefit the two cities, particularly in tourism, trade, and investment. Up next... The military reports over 6,000 rebels have surrendered to the government during former AFP Chief General Guevara's term. PBA Legends announced a fundraising event for the benefit of fellow retired players. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Environmental violations. Tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade. Siyempre naman, na uh, ako favor talaga ako sa pagkuklos ng Boracay. Kasi yung pagkuklos ng Boracay, uh, para din yan sa mga tao doon or para din yan sa mga mamayanan na nandoon na uh, since na sobrang ano na, polluted na yung Boracay. So kailangan talaga yun ng refreshment kung baga ng mga, mga tao ba. Honestly, I am not in favor of the total closure of the whole island of Boracay because because of that closure two of my closest friends and relatives are actually jobless right now because of that closure their business were affected and then their structure they were uh, the building they were working with have been demolished by the government so ako tatanungin payag ako para malinis ang buong Boracay pero sa business side Siguro, ano, hindi mabuti kasi sa ilang buwan, pag ikaw may business, kailangan may profit ka every month. <laughs> uh, sa akin, parang uh, ako sa akin, uh, I think negative side ko, hindi, hindi ako pabuhol na isip ko close yung Puratay. So, and then, yung, kung sa kanan, kung gusto nyo na rehabilitate ang Puratay, Pwede naman niya kahit hindi nila pag-close, tuloy-tuloy ang operasyon, hindi ka pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-pag-p
we should take it as an opportunity to rehabilitate and make things better. The Metropolitan Waterworks and Sewerage System has assured of adequate water supply in Metro Manila following conflicting statements of the two MWSS concessionaires, Manila Water and Maynilad, over water supply allocation. MWSS Administrator Reynaldo Velasco has expressed optimism Manila Water and Maynilad can resolve their differences without the MWSS instituting drastic measures. Dr. Sevillo David Jr., Director of the National Water Resources Board, has also assured the public of continued water supply during the summer. Over 6,000 members of the New People's Army surrendered throughout the tenure of outgoing AFP Chief Rey Leonardo Guerrero. Among the surrenderers are regular members of the NPA, militia, members of underground organizations, and their supporters. Meanwhile, 47 rebels were killed in legitimate operations, 61 were arrested, and over 200 firearms were recovered. Guerrero said he had exceeded his target to cut down the strength of the NPA by half before the end of the year. He is confident that his successor, Lieutenant General Carlito Galvez Jr., is capable of leading the AFP. Among Galvez's goals is to end the communist insurgency. Malacanang calls for outgoing PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa to report his new post as head of Bureau of Corrections as soon as possible. De La Rosa said the presidential management staff has informed him that he was expected to report to Bucor a week after his retirement. The former PNP chief had appealed for a longer vacation for him to spend time with his family in Davao. De La Rosa retires today right after turning over his post to Director General Oscar Albayalde. Former stars of SMB, Alaska, Ginebra, and Pure Foods will come together for one night of basketball for charity. The retired beer men will battle the former aces while the legends of the barangay will take on former hotshots this September at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. The games will be the first project of the Samahan ng mga dating profesional na basketbolista ng Pilipinas, a newly founded organization catering to the needs of past PBA and MBA stars. Mapua head coach and CRISPA legend Atoy Ko stands as the current head of the union. PBA Commissioner Willie Marshall vowed to support the new Hoops legend's body and their intention to help their peers. Philippine Sports Commission Commissioner Mon Fernandez and former Senator Robert Jaworski, who started for SMB and Ginebra respectively, are among those who are expected to grace the event. Environmental advocates are showing their concern for Mother Nature with a tree planting and trekking event to celebrate Earth Day in Negros Oriental. Here is our report. The Energy Development Corporation, in collaboration with other partners, has set a two-day trek and planting activity in Negros Oriental this weekend in celebration of Earth Day this year. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated worldwide on April 22. The Earth Day climb to Cuernos de Negros, also known as Mount Talinis, will kick off on Saturday and end Sunday with two prearranged entry and exit routes either in Dawin or Valencia. The activity is a joint effort of EDC, the Provincial Government of Negros Oriental, the Municipalities of Dawin and Valencia, and the 10M in 10 project. Frances Ariola, EDC Corporate Communications Specialist, said the trek also aims to raise awareness to preserve Negros Island's remaining forests. Ariola said they hope this activity would generate interest not only among environmentalists and mountain climbers, but also among the people of Negros who continue to put emphasis on the preservation of the earth. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country.
Here's another look at today's top stories. Lieutenant General Carlito Galvez Jr. takes over the leadership of the AFP. Labor groups challenge President Duterte to sign the draft executive order removing contractualization. The LTFRB approves the entry of a new ride-sharing company. And PBA Legends announce a fundraising event for the benefit of fellow retired players. Thank you for watching another edition of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.